Dr. Correa, the committee voted not to approve the compound with the data as it was presented today, but said that it would approve the compound with some additional work on Avid Pharmaceuticals' part. Yes, and I think overall um, the final vote might have been a little surprising to people after a full day of very positive commentary by the advisory committee, um, by certainly uh, the public uh, during the uh, open uh, forum. Uh, and, uh, but I think in the reaction of the advisory committee really uh, stems from the need for clinicians to have a binary yes, no, right? negative, positive response uh, in order to make recommendations to their patients. And uh, what the A07 or final autopsy study uh, identified was really more of a binary, I'm sorry, it was instead of a binary uh, response, it was more of a qualitative response of a one to five, leaving some room for question. And I think that's the main concern. The main concern is how do we then interpret that uh, for the general population, for the clinicians out there that would hopefully be using this tool. So one of the committee's caveats was if AVID could come back with a training program that they would show uh, instructed readers in how to interpret these data correctly and um, increase the reproducibility of their reads then that would be much more likely to lead to approval. Yes, and I think the final two recommendations are exactly that. First, a training program, which clearly from uh, the day's events we saw that uh, Avid Pharmaceuticals are already thinking about uh, training programs for uh, non-readers, right? So that's uh, already something under consideration. And the second thing is to make sure that, that, uh, that the data they presented can be uh, reproducible as a binary code, a yes-no, instead of a, a qualitative uh, one-to-five decision. So if those two things can be met, uh, then this advisory committee's recommendation is for approval. Can you tell me just how important is it that we have an agent that can that can analyze amyloid burden in a person's brain while they're still alive? We feel at the Alzheimer's Association that in light of the changes in our thinking about Alzheimer's disease, uh, about uh, when Alzheimer's disease actually begins in the brain and the long continuum that this disease may indeed represent, um, it's going to be very important to be able to measure amyloid burden uh, earlier and earlier. Uh, so today's uh, hearing, today's committee meeting, uh, and a potential approval of uh, this type of compound as a commercial tool uh, to measure amyloid uh, can be so positive for our communities. It could certainly help even today in a clinical setting, um, help a patient and their family understand uh, the def a, definitive, uh, a, a definitive notion of whether their cognitive impairment, uh, whether their dementia is due to Alzheimer's uh, dementia, is due to an amyloid presence, which then we would um, make the next uh, step to say this is really more certain to be Alzheimer's disease, um, or whether other indications should be examined. Um, it's a time saver, it's a potential um, uh, money saver in terms of medications that could possibly be used, in terms of other avenues, other avenues in terms of other diagnoses that could be implemented. So there are so many positives for our community. And then added to that are the positives been, uh, that we add to the research uh, component, uh, which really opens the doors for this commercially available product then to be used in additional research settings. Well, thank you very much for being with us today. I appreciate it.